Good morning, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is part of our series that we're doing here at Kuzi uh, to talk to some of our favorite partners and some of these uh, merging technologies that are, are knocking it out and, and changing the world. And, you know, we're going to kind of run through, you know, the history of PathSpot and kind of how you guys got to where you're at today, what the future looks like, and then, you know, our relationship and our partnership. Um, so, Christine, first off, can you tell us a little bit about PathSpot, you know, what what the technology does what problems it solves and, and um, how you got started. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks thanks for having us here today, Ryan. It's, it's really fun to get to have this conversation. Um, so PathSpot is a system to help protect mostly food service operators, whether that's restaurants or packaging facilities or cafeterias, um, from dangerous invisible contaminants that could make someone sick on our hands. As we know, this is one of the most common it weighs for contamination to be spread, especially in a food service environment. And then to utilize data and tracking capabilities to backtrack information on SOPs around hygiene, hand washing protocols, and use our unique solution to be able to really create a culture of hygiene and sanitation for the brands that work with us. It's really easy. It mounts on the wall next to a hand washing sink. Uh, and right after employees wash their hands, they put them under the sink, flip them over, and it pops up instantly and tells them if they have invisible contaminant on their hands. The whole thing takes less than two seconds. Uh, and then we backtrack that data into a 24 seven data dashboard and custom daily, weekly, monthly, monthly reports that help brands understand where any gaps in their sanitation procedures might be and really to build a, a fun, energizing, rewarding culture around hand washing. Um, and so how we got started, you know, my, my background is in biomedical engineering and, and uh, in global and public health. Um, I started more on the research side of that world uh, and then saw this opportunity within day-to-day -day issues that we have here from a public health standpoint where technologies that had been built out for hospital settings um, hadn't been adapted to be low cost, durable and accessible for uh, organizations like restaurants and, and food supply areas where there is a huge public health need. Uh, so I invented the technology to be able to work to solve that and then have been incredibly fortunate to bring in experts on the restaurant side uh, onto our team, uh, like Kim, who's, who's joined with me here today, um, so that we can really approach this and, and build the most impactful tool for the partners that we work with. Yeah, that, that, that's incredible. Um, so, you know, where were you at? Tell me about your, your light bulb moment or your watershed moment when you're like, this is a gap that needs filled and, and kind of how you got to, you know, <clears throat> the, the kickoff point of this. Uh, you know, we met you back uh, in 2020, right as the pandemic was kicking off uh, in Startup Alley at Murtech, and it was incredible. Um, and we were blown away by you and your energy and the technology, to be honest. But obviously, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of attention was given towards food quality, or not food quality, but san hand sanitation and being, you know, just a good person, to be honest with you, prior to this. But like, what was your watershed moment when you're like, hey, this is something that I want to run with? You know, it's funny, in a post-2020 world, people ask me all the time, you know, how did you know hand washing mattered? Uh, and, and the honest answer is hand washing always mattered. Uh, it it right. definitely mattered pre-COVID uh, and it matters now the same. And, and the studies and impact that have been shared recently in the past few years um, were studies that had been done, you know, well prior to the outbreaks of coronavirus um, and understanding that the number one most effective and cost effective way to stop the spread of illness is and always has been proper hand washing techniques. Um, for me, I, I'm a nerd, uh, and so I was working full time in the hospital healthcare space, but just was seeing these constant outbreaks on the news. I mean, we all remember them, you know, uh, or, you know, in the in the past five years, people getting incredibly sick, hospitalizations, you know, even deaths from these outbreaks that were costing brands billions of dollars. And I guess as a, as a biomedical engineer and I'm really passionate about public health, I just thought, why is there no technology solutions? There's technology solutions for everything. And all we have for this is a sign that says, please wash your hands before returning to work. And I, I think it was really that sign that was the moment for me. You know, I was reading these studies and then looking at the sign and just felt like there had to be something better out there. Yeah. 
So, uh, and you, you, you uh, basically assembled this, this rock star team of people with great experiences in the restaurant industry. Um, and, you know, in the, in the restaurant space, the retail space, and you're working in both categories right now. Uh, data is everything, but the data has never been focused in this particular channel. It's always been, you know, what's driving revenue? What's my ROI? You know, how can I reduce cost? So tell me about some of the data. I think that's the most fascinating thing to me is how you create these habits amongst workforces and everything. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Kim, do you want to take this one? I, I know that you work daily with our customers on on building out these impact stories with them. Yeah, no problem. Um, and it's a great question, Ryan. The hard part I would say with the data is that we have nothing to compare it to because it's always been an honor system. You know, a manager's marking down that absolutely all of our team has washed their hands appropriately. Um, you know, real world, they're not going to audit against themselves and say we had a really rough day that, you know, may hinder a bonus or may hinder some type of, you know, reward at work. And so, you know, day one when PathSpot's installed is really where we look at as a benchmark of behavior. It's a little inflated because the toy's new, you know, everyone wants to play with the new object in the back of the house. Um, but so we kind of take the first 30 days, average it out, and we call that a snapshot in the beginning of how your hand washing behaviors have been, right? Matching your SOPs, matching, you know, brand best. Um, and then from there, we see just constant behavior and training. And as Christine mentioned, you know, creating that culture of clean. So as an employee scans their hand under the PathSpot device, if they get a contamination, that's not a problem. The issue is if they don't rewash their hands. And so it's not coming into like a big brother effect. It's really turning into a, you did what you're supposed to do and you prevented what could have been, you know, getting someone sick. So, you know, matching that data with um, behaviors and training have really escalated within the restaurant space. Um, not so much as an ROI because we, food safety is a cost center. We're never gonna sell on fact that we're gonna save you money. Um, of course, you could spin the story of you know mitigating risk, and of course we're doing that. But I think overall we are creating that culture that the brands want to be the safest place to design, the safest place to shop, and um, turning that into educating the public on what's best practice when it comes to these contaminations. And so it's been a really exciting journey, um, especially understanding with the brands what is important to them, right? So is it just compliance of making sure their staff wash their hands once an hour? Or is it they're confident in their staff doing the behaviors, but how well are they doing it? And every brand has a different opinion about that, but we have the ability of being able to solve for all of those with data and then, um, you know, prescribe different ways to either get better results or, you know, champion you on saying you guys are doing a phenomenal job here. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I think, you know, you talk about, um, you know, you don't talk about the, the, the cost savings, but from my perspective, there is a huge cost savings. If you look at some of these brands that have had shutdowns due to food safety issues, um, you know, from our uh, perspective as a, an integration partner that does installations every day, uh, specifically in the restaurant space, they're always saying, hey, you need to have us open and operational by 6 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever it happens to be, because if you're not, we're not operational because we're installing something that's inhibiting them for opening their restaurant, that's a big deal. So if you look at some of these brands have had to do shutdowns in the past and, you know, throughput is a huge variable stat that is constantly monitored. And, you know, you look at a brand that's been shut down and maybe they're only, it's, you know, it takes a while to get those consumers comfortable back with that. So I think this is, it's, it's kind of like an unsung hero, in my opinion, because it's doing the, di the dirty work, if you will, but it's, um, but, you know, the it's, it's, it's behind work. the scenes things. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's it, to me, I think it's, it's really cool and it, it's relevant um, today and now more than ever. And so um, we, that's why we're so excited to be partnered with you guys on this, because it's something that we can confidently talk about. And there's nothing in the market that, you know, solves this problem. So it, it's really interesting to there. Tell me about some some challenges you guys have had. Um, obviously, I mean, we're seeing it on a day to day basis. Everybody wants to move at warp speed and install everything and have all this new technology and innovation. And then people don't have the resources to do it internally, externally. Tell me about some challenges that you've faced, you know, long term or short, short term as well. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, it's so funny. I, I think back to meeting uh, at Startup Alley um, when, when we were both presenting and I thought to myself, as this starts to take off, we're really going to need you. Um, and this was, yeah. you know, when we just had our initial prototypes of the device out and, and hadn't yet built our team yeah. a couple years back. 
Um, but I was so hopeful that we would get to the point where, where we would be at that, at that throughput challenge. Yeah. Um, and, and it is a challenge, right? I mean, especially with a hardware focus, you know, even though our value comes with the data and the machine learning algorithms we provide, we do need to be able to actively install our units into these establishments for it to be able to work effectively. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, that's something that can take you know, it, even though it's a, a very quick process to get set up, it has to be coordinated, it has to be set up outside of standard working hours for the locations. Um, and it needs to be something that's done well the first time because that first interaction that a manager has with our unit is so critical given that this is the first time they've ever had usually any form of hand washing or sanitation technology. So it's not replacing something else where people can say, oh, well, it's you know swapping out my POS for a new POS. This is something that's brand new. And so the importance of it being uh, installed and, um, and brought to the brand appropriately is so critical. Uh, and, and that's a challenge when, you know, obviously we have a small team. A lot of these groups have, um, you know, very, very impactful, but small, but mighty food safety arms uh, and don't have the capability to go into every single location and put these on the wall. And it's where, you know, partnering with you makes a huge impact because we're able to yeah. make sure that as this is getting brought into a location, the manager comes in and it's sitting there on the wall in the spot where it needs to be uh, installed appropriately. That That's huge for us. Yeah. So as you guys are going and, and you know, your value prop to the restaurants, retailers, whatever it happens to be, you know, I think there's a lot of value in the data, but like, how are you guys getting people to champion? I mean, obviously this is something, you know, we, we've talked about it before, Kim, where in the past, uh, you know, if someone just puts it on the wall, they don't get the value, the true value out of it. They're like, oh, you know, they utilize it or they put it in their bathroom and they put it in the wrong location. So how are you guys getting people to champion? Is it, uh, is it a culture thing? Is it a stats thing? Tell me a little bit about like, how those conversations evolve, uh, because obviously you're doing a great job and you guys are going globally. Yeah, I, it, to be honest, it depends on the brand, um, but I'll have Kim take this one and, and showcase some examples. Yeah, so it's a great question, Ryan. So um, typically we will see, um, you know, brands that value themselves, right? We're gonna be the safest place to shop. We're gonna be the safest place to work. And when we do that, we talk to people individually and we say, hey, you know, how are you guys managing that today? And how are you guys validating that you guys are meeting the, you know, the mantra that you're kind of setting within this, you know, industry? And taking that back, we'll install a unit or two at a location and we'll benchmark against itself. You know, we are very proud that we've never had someone try us or do a pilot early on and not roll out system wide. Um, the data is the driving factor there. In you know, early years when we just put a device on the wall, that's great for instant feedback, but the long-term feedback is really where we see that, you know, um, that super kind of behavior change within the stores that now food safety people can sleep at night. Um, we have open APIs and so everyone going digital, whether it be thermometers, whether it be wellness checks, whether it be you know, refrigeration systems, now we can pipe into that as well and only enrich their behavior. We've had a few brands that said internal audits are a challenge, right? We have surprise audits, we have scheduled audits. It's a snapshot in time of how their day-to-day -day everything goes within the restaurant. However, if you have data that shows every single day, this is our behavior, and while you came in, you didn't see one employee wash their hands after they touched their hat, that was a mistake because there's stress with an audit happening, right? It's not necessarily a reflection of how the store is managed day to day. And so we've been a compliment, whether it's at the store level for the general manager to remove the human element of, you know, Ryan, I didn't see you wash your hands today, and then someone feeling like they're being victimized, versus, you know, at the corporate level, food safety is saying, these are our top performers, these are people that perhaps need more training and or updating our SOPs to reflect that. And I think that is the value and that's where we get these champions because it allows them to see every day what's happening at the store and to empower them to do their jobs better. Are, are you guys getting any uh, reaction from like health departments and, and government entities that are you know like, this is awesome. I mean, this seems like this would solve a lot of problems with some of the challenges they face on a daily basis. Have you guys had any of those kind of conversations? I was gonna say it, it's, it's really interesting in that actually as the awareness level around the importance of hygiene and sanitation has elevated, uh, you know, not just in this industry, but 
across the world, right? We used to start every conversation explaining to people, you need to wash your hands for 20 seconds. People would say, wow, that's a long time. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. That doesn't happen anymore. Um, so what's interesting right. is that a lot of the public health uh, oriented organizations are also recognizing that understanding and utilizing it as an opportunity to enter into the space in a different way. So some states or local ordinances are actually passing regulation around requiring a hand washing tracking uh, mechanism, whether that's a person, you know, sitting there and counting hand washes or a technology like ours that can actually track back to the SOPs and requirements and make sure that employees are given their hand washing breaks, employees are given the opportunity to take the time to keep themselves safe, actually, as you know, the people who can get the most sick in and in one of these environments are the people working in it and surrounded by the potential for these contaminants all day. Um, so it's definitely something where we see a, a large opportunity for those partnerships in the future. Um, so one of the Absolutely. things in partnering with regulators is the fact that our device is a smoke detector. So for the brand and for ourselves, for liability purposes, we will not, um, you know, report to the auditors saying that this is something that, you know, store B is right. doing terribly and store A is doing great <laughs> and we have documentation for it, go check them out. Um, but we, we will do, though, is that I think we're really nice to have where if something comes up when they're going through the review of their audit, they say this was something that the 17 year old was nervous because the auditor was in. And this is not a reflection of our behavior and perhaps can alleviate some of the uh, work after an audit that would happen. So, um, you know, we are very friendly with all of them. And we've actually just went to a conference where you know, the regulators do want to partner and they do want to shift into more of a resource center rather than a, you know, um, a punishment center for not following the rules. And so saying that we don't have people that are washing our hands or we are struggling with temperature of chicken and then going to them, not calling themselves out, but saying what resources do you have or recommendations do you have to help us better train our staff in these areas. And I think that's our our low hanging fruit for the time being, where it will evolve, I think is to be determined, but I think that's our best partnership for them right now. Yeah, so, uh, you know, based on some of our past conversations that I've always found intriguing, I think when people think of you know, foodborne illness, everybody defaults to raw chicken. I think it's just something that's been pounded into our heads. And Kim, I think you're the one that pointed out to me, like, hey, vegetables and fruit are a big resource or a big source of, of all of this stuff. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I eat raw vegetables straight from the fridge all the time. My wife's like, you're not going to wash that. And I'm like, mm. and it is what it is. I, I think it'll make me stronger. I don't know. Um, but tell me about a little bit about, you know, some of the things that you guys have seen from a, a micro level. Um, and then the other thing I want to ask is, I'm sure you heard stories like, what is the, the weirdest thing that's been scanned to date? And if I keep this PG, but uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. So, you know, I always say to, to groups when they're asking about the science, you know, nobody walks into a restaurant with a vial of E. coli ever. Um, it just doesn't happen, right? What, how this stuff gets into our food supply um, comes from unwashed vegetables, comes from raw chicken, comes from hands that touch those different things and then spread that across an establishment and then other components get touched as well. Um, so it's definitely something where all of these sources lead to potential contamination, but the component that allows that to be spread across an establishment is someone actively touching the, the piece of infected lettuce or the piece of infected chicken. Um, and as Kim mentioned, we, we look for the host vectors of contaminant that carry these harmful illnesses across the board. So we're looking for those host levels that could carry many of the harmful contaminants that make someone sick, whether that's coming from fruit or coming from a vegetable or coming from chicken or coming from someone exiting the restroom. Um, all of them, whether it's from a chicken or a cow or a pig or a human, uh, these types of waste right. bacterium um, are the things that, that can get us really sick um, and, and also spread quickly through things like hand washing. Yeah, so, In terms you know, of the, uh, the grossest scan, our device actually, <laughs> though, it, uh, it, it, um, it only uh, is set up to scan for hands and, and we've built it very intentionally for that. So if you choose right. to put something else underneath the scanner, it will just <laughs> pop up and say, 
please put hands underneath the scanner uh, and our our detection algorithm knows if uh, if someone's trying to pull a fast one and, and scan something different. Yeah. Um, so that is something that we do correct for uh, with the scan. But I'm sure, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things carrying that. And actually, one piece that's interesting is we can, through the through the way that the contaminants is, is uh, patterned on the hand, we can oftentimes tie back to what caused that contaminant to be spread across the restaurant and then use that as a way to build into SOPs. So for example, we know what the line of an underside of a bowl that many fast casual salad chains might use or, or other groups might use. And so if we can pick up on that pigmentation line, our machine learning algorithm can pull that out and we can, in our trainings with the brands actually say, hey, we're seeing that a lot of the time that you see contaminant, um, it's coming from the underside of these metal bowls. We should add a position in your SOW to clean underneath those metal bowls. Um, and so that's one of the ways that we're able to, while we don't scan for those things in our current version of our product, um, while we can still understand and build that back in to have better processes. Yeah, Christine, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, when we first met and, and how our relationship between Pat Spot and Koozie formed and, and kind of how we kicked this whole thing off? Yeah, absolutely, Ryan. So we met on the stage for Startup Alley at Mertech, where we were battling it out very early in the morning, pitching in front of a very large group of food safety and industry and executive leaders, um, sharing our solutions when, when both of us were in a, a much more early stage of our journeys uh, in building these organizations. So I knew from when I first met you that there would be an exciting opportunity um, for us to be able to partner as we both scaled. And I think we're, we're standing to the side of the stage being like, we need to stay in touch. Um, it actually was only yeah. a couple of days later that, uh, that you know, we entered into our lockdown phase um, from COVID-19. And so I think yours might have been one of the last uh, hands that I physically shook um, uh, during, yeah. during that phase. Um, but I think it was really impactful that we were able to catch up and, and keep up with each other as we continued to grow. I've been so grateful for your support uh, and encouragement as, as you know, building these organizations and, and having the, um, the broader team of others, you know, entering into the space and being able to build off of each other. So as we started to really grow our team, brought on, you know, experts like Kim and, and others um, in the industry and, and started really expanding across the brand footprints, um, I, I knew that your team w was one that we really wanted to work with to ensure that successful launch. And, and then uh, Kim really uh, took the partnership from there. So, you know, Kim, you can also speak to, to what that phase looked like. Yeah, absolutely. I will admit I was at that same conference and I did not attend your session. <laughs> so I apologize for that. <laughs> it was very early in the morning. Um, so, uh, but I will say that, so in speaking to some of our early pilots that, you know, started with Christine and Dutch and, you know, good relationships that we've had, you know, they said, we'd love to work with you. We just cannot figure out. And the woman I was speaking to at the time was like, I just have to figure out when my boyfriend and I can go put this on the wall. And I was just like, that's the biggest issue of getting this to move forward. I was like, you physically going in the morning on your off hours with your boyfriend to get this on the wall. You know, installation is is relatively simple, Ryan, as you and your team know. Um, and so I, you know, circled back with Christine and I was just like, I don't, this is the hurdle I'm having. I don't know any, you know, I've never sold hardware. I don't know any installers. And she's like, I know who we can talk to. And instantly connected me with you. You and I had some really great conversations early on with networking and you know, since then, you guys have done a phenomenal job in our rollouts with our support and scheduling. And so that's been exciting. You know, even so, as you mentioned, us going global, we didn't have an installer in the UK. And you guys were happy to go through your Rolodex and refer us over. And it, everything has been lovely. We've always been enjoying working with you guys. I, I can't say enough about this partnership. Uh, obviously, th this has been a, a long uh, time in the making. And we're excited. I think we're really just kicking this off and beginning to to grow this, we are excited. Uh, and it comes back to the people on Christine on your team and kudos to you and Dutch for literally building a rock solid team. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited to see where this goes and uh, we appreciate all that you've done for us and the partnership and look forward to, you know, your guys' continued success and, and hopefully uh, adding value to that as you grow.